Hello there, and welcome to a random message before this video begins. Um, full disclosure, this episode was meant to come out on Christmas Day, and as such, I had recorded a Merry Christmas intro to it. Full disclosure, I forgot to upload it to YouTube. That's on me. So I just wanted to take the time just to hope that you guys had a very good Christmas Day. Hopefully, you guys are having a good festive period. Hopefully, you have a good New Year as well. Let's face it, it's got to get better at some point. But hopefully you guys have had a great time. Hopefully it's been safe. Hopefully everyone, all of your families and friends are well, as well as yourselves. And yeah, I wish everyone who watches these videos nothing but the best. Now, with all of that waffle out of the way, here's the video. Okay, back-to-back -back losses for the first time in a long time mean that we have to win both of our games and hope that results go our way in order for us to win the title. I'm not hopeful. Hello there, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of Let's Go Hammers. I'm Stubo, thank you very much for joining me in today's episode where we are going to be playing uh, Arsenal and Manchester United. I had to quickly double-check then because I forgot which game I've just played. Um, if that does sound like a plan to you to finish the season off, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well for more Football Manager awesomeness if you've enjoyed the save so far. And if you're proud of us as well, we're currently occupying second place. We shouldn't be in second place in the second season of a West Ham save. Yet here we are with the second best goal scored third best goals conceded we're, we're a very good football team um so yeah i think that's worth a subscribe if i'm being honest with you since you were last week we played just the one game as i mentioned in the intro we've had back-to-back -back losses uh that loss being at chelsea at stamford bridge which was not ideal heartbreaking as well as you can see we were in the lead we then let them score three goals uh but then jared bowen did get another goal uh towards the end just to try and uh Try and get us back into the game. Didn't obviously work, but there we go. That's how things shake out, which does leave the table looking like this. So, as it stands, we're in the top four. It doesn't matter what happens. We are in the top four with two games to go. In fact, I think we're confirmed top three. So, um, all is well on that regard. Um, Manchester United and Liverpool did play each other, and Liverpool won, which was annoying. I was really hoping this would be a draw because we would still be top in that case, but... As things stand, Liverpool are in the driver's seat. They have got Aston Villa and Everton as their final two games. We're hoping that sixth place Villa can do a job on Liverpool for us. They're at Villa Park, so we're hoping that maybe, just maybe, um, we can get lucky there. And uh, hopefully that can happen. Manchester United, interestingly, play Newcastle, who are obviously near the bottom of the table. But, I don't know, does Newcastle have the squad that all of their money should mean that they do? I mean... You're looking at it. There's some. There's some decent players in there, but. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've got a feeling United might be winning that. Which, assuming we then beat Arsenal in the first game today, means it would come down to a shootout on the final day to see what would happen. Um. So really, our hope today is we beat Arsenal and Arsenal and uh, Aston Villa beat Liverpool. That's the best case scenario going into the final game. Um. We're going to play both games regardless. Um. Uh, so just so we don't shortchange you guys, basically. So with all of that said, let, oh no! Before that, actually, we've made another signing. Yuri Tillemans. We have signed him. He is going to be a West Ham player next season. Um, a lot of our we've got a lot of assists in the team, and we've scored a lot of goals. But a lot of those goals have come from set plays. I want to have someone in the team who can try and be a, cr a creator, a provider. Um, and potentially a goal scorer as well in his own right from open play. And I feel like Yuri Tielemans, um, I don't know why he's a C minus because he's much better than that. I, I think Yuri Tielemans could be that guy. He's got great stats for playmaking. He's got a couple of good uh, traits as well. He's 26 years old, so he's still got a bit of time in him to grow and be better. He would be our third choice midfielder. And I do have to kind of look at the midfield and work out how he's going to fit in. But I feel like it's a good signing. Right. Now that's out of the way, let's actually get to this game. So this is going to be the team that we're hoping is going to get us a result at Arsenal. Remember, we did beat us. Well, we beat an Arsenal earlier in the season. I think they might have beaten us as well. But we're at home. Arsenal are in like 7th or 8th or something like that, or 
might be even in fifth. Anyway, point is, we're higher up the table. So, this is the 11. Levant in goal. Johnson, Diop, Ginter and Cresswell in defence. Sushak and Rice in midfield with Bowen, Hadji and Madueke supporting Alvarez up front. Kozuma did pick up an injury. He could play. We've had the thing to say that he would be able to play with minimum risk of complications, but we're not even bothered with that. Um, oh, Pablo Maffeo as well, as that says. Joining Real Madrid. I think we got about 20 million for him, so... That's something as well. Uh, so he's on the bench, but he's probably not going to play. But that's the 11, and we're just going to see what happens. So without any further ado, let's go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. As I said, I don't know when the last time we had back-to-back -back losses is. But we've not won in three, which is definitely unlike us. Um, Arsenal also not in the best run of form, but they did win their last game. Um, they've got a very good team. <laughs> a very, very good team indeed. Um, seventh, I was right the first time. I, don't doubt yourself, Stu. Um, so Arsenal will be looking to get ahead of Villa. Villa will be looking to keep ahead of Arsenal. But hopefully, tell you what, Villa, I'll do you a favour. You do us a favour and beat Liverpool, we'll do you a favour and beat Arsenal. How does that sound? Hopefully that will work. I don't think it will. Um, we've started okay. Arsenal have started a little bit brighter, of course, you know. They are in better form than we are, uh, so we, we are going to be up against it a little bit today. We, I mean, that's, the thing has glitched again. I'll change it when it comes back up. We've seen Thomas Sushek just heads it over. Just heads it over. We had a good chance there. Um, I'm just going to pause the game one second. This is just going to continue to annoy me. Bear me one second. Might be me needing to download an update for the skin that I'm using, but there we go. We're back. Um, we've kind of closed things up. Arsenal started better. We have definitely... Uh, close the gap a little bit. We're going to encourage the players because they have done a good job so far in this half. We just need to carry it on. Uh, Cresswell gets it back to Lafont. Lafont's Ginter. Ginter to Diop. Diop chips it forward looking for Alvarez who has been very poor recently. He has been very goal shy. It'll be nice to see him show up with a goal today. And Bowen has put him through and Julian Alvarez will be looking to do that. And he has. Julian Alvarez makes it 1-0. The title is still up for grabs. And Julian Alvarez has given us the chance. We do still have to see the game out. But my word, have we just given ourselves a great opportunity. We want to keep an eye on how the Villa game is going as well. Uh, I think Madueke has picked up a knock. Hopefully he can play through it. Uh, as things stand. Oh, we're playing early. So we don't know how the game has gone yet. So we're going to have to wait and find that result out after the fact. Okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Martinelli's in here. Lafont makes a really, really poor couple of saves. My word. Lafont, we could do without him doing that, if I'm being completely honest with with you. Uh, that was a bit scary, but we somehow keep it out, and it is still 1-0. And we're just going to point the finger and say that one. Uh, weren't that bad. Weren't that bad. Happy with your effort in the final third. Right, I think we're going to have to take off Madueke, which is frustrating. It's a foot injury. Um, it's the camera shaking, by the way. I've got my foot tapping below the table, so I'm going to try and stop that. Um, Madueke is injured. I think it has to be Guiri. I think he's the one I would trust more than Alvarado or anyone else. So we'll just bring him on, have a quick chat with him, and get into the second half. And fingers crossed we can continue playing how we have done uh, and maybe get another goal. That would be the ideal thing to happen. We'll drop a bit more encouragement to the boys. Um... And that's really had the opposite effect. I shouldn't have done encouragement. I knew that that was the wrong thing to do. And they've equalised. Mm, I don't know whether this counts as bottling it. Because Arsenal are a good team. But. <sighs> we need to really. If I'm honest. Grab this game by the scruff of the neck. So we're going to demand more. We're going to go attacking as well. We want to win this game as much as they want to win this game. Um, Hadji and Gintz are both having poor games, so they might be the uh, the next people I'd consider taking off. And what a free kick that was, but Lafont is equal to it. Cresswell gets it to Gawiri. Gawiri looking to break now, looking for the pass. Gets it to Hadji. Hadji back to Cresswell. Slowly building from the back here. I don't mind it too much, but I'd like an end product. Johnson into Sushak. Sushak back to Diop. Diop. Johnson. Johnson gets it over to Bowen. Bowen. Hadji. Alvarez on the run now. He's been forced a little bit wide. He needs people in the box. Bowen now with the ball. Again, still needs people in the box. Gets it back to Sushak. Sushak holding the play up. Whips it in. Looking for Gawiri. And Gawiri has got it in. But is it going to count? The referee is having a look at it. The little man in his ear is having a quick chat with him. And he is going to say that the goal will not stand. Wow. That is a huge call from the referee. It has been disallowed. 
I mean, I would argue that this guy over here, I would argue he might have been playing him on, you know. Oh, boy. Right. I'd like to do another encouragement now, because at 1-1, one, one, it'll have a better effect. Craswell does really well there. Uh, Gawiri gets it into Alvarez. Alvarez gets it through to Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen, who has been the hero of the season. Can he be the hero again? Whips it forward right to the back post, but it was so far out. Gawiri gets it to Craswell. Rice now. All the way back to Ginsa. Back to Declan Rice. Declan Rice, who is captain today, gets it into Gawiri. Gawiri takes it down, but he's tackled the last second. And has Jared Bowen just won us a penalty in the 70th minute? He very well might have done. The referee is listening to the little VAR man in his ear. And he has given a penalty. This is huge. Is it going to be Sushek to take or is it Jared Bowen? Might be Hadji. It's Sushek. Thomas Sushek steps up. And Thomas Sushek puts us in the lead. It's 2-1 to West Ham. And we are giving ourselves the best possible chance going into the final day. Again, it will go to the final day if we win this game. But if Villa can do us a favour, we can go into the final day on top of the table. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're going to make substitutions. I know the game is just going now, but we are going to make some substitutions. Right, what can we do? Okay, those are the changes. We're bringing on a uh, flowing Grilich in the midfield. Ginter's coming off and Declan Rice is going to step back to being a defender. We're actually going to make him a ball-playing defender on defend for that one. Uh, and we've also brought on Thiago Armada in the advanced playmaker position, bringing him on instead of Yanis Hadji. Um, Hadji just couldn't get into the game today and his set pieces weren't making enough of a difference. So those are the changes. And we're going to carry on. We're carrying on into a highlight. I did see the highlight had started when we paused. So hopefully this is a highlight in our favour and not in Arsenal's. In fact, that ball. What is LaFont doing coming out that far? Do not give the ball away, boys. They haven't. And Alvarez is in. And Alvarez could get a third. He has got a third. The referee's having a look again. The referee's having a look. They are having a chat with him again. Is it going to be a second disallowed goal for us today? No, it's not. Alvarez scores. He has been really poor recently. He scored once and it was a very fluky goal. But Julian Alvarez gets on the score sheet, keeps on side, puts it in the back of the net. And we are 3-1 ahead, ahead of the 3 o'clock kickoffs today. It wasn't even that tight in my opinion. It wasn't even that tight. Alvarez puts it in the back of the net. 3-1. We will continue with the tactical changes. We're going to drop a little bit of praise, but I'm going to wait to do that until we're in between highlights. Uh, just to give everyone a pat on the head. 3-1. It's only a two-goal difference. We've still got time for this to all go wrong. But Gariri stopped running. Why did Gariri stop running? I don't understand why he did that. Diop does really well there. Johnson to Sushek. Sushek out to Bowen. Bowen looking to ping a ball over. He doesn't. He gives it away to Saka and Nicholas Pepe now on the ball. No one tackles him. Can someone get in the way? If we can just stop this from going in, that'd be great. We have stopped it, and Diop clears it up to Alvarez, and Alvarez can't win the header, but Armada gets the ball, and Thiago Armada looking for an outlet, gets it to Bowen, Bowen over to Alvarez. Could it be four? It can! Julian Alvarez has turned up at the end of the season. He wants to win a Premier League. This team wants to win a Premier League, and we have put ourselves in a great position. We still have to have things go our way. But we are not going down without a fight. And Julian Alvarez has turned up today. And it's 4-1 to West Ham United. Get in, boys. Get in. Oh, wow. Wow. We're going to do a quick bit of praise. In fact, we'll wait for the end of this highlight. Uh, see, Arsenal trying a cheeky little short corner. Not really working. Um, I need to cough really badly. But I'm holding it off until Thiago Armada completes this move. He has got men over. If he can find them, he hasn't. He's gone backwards. Probably for the best. Let's keep a bit of possession, boys. All the way back to Auburn Lafont, who kicks the ball up. Looks for Gawiri. Gawiri is so poor today. But fortunately, some of West... Not West Ham. Some of Arsenal's distribution has been bad as well. Gawiri now takes the ball beautifully. Looking for an outlet. Gets it back to Declan Rice, who has done a solid job in the centre of defence, actually. All the way back to Lafont, the ball goes. Now kicked forward. Looking for Gawiri. Gawiri flicks it on to Thiago Armada. Thiago Armada! The cough couldn't wait anymore. He had men there. He could have passed the ball, and he didn't. And he didn't. Right, we're praising the team. We're going a little bit more defensive. now. we're going very defensive now, actually. We're just going to do all of the things that I like to do when we want to hold on to a lead. 
Let's just do all of that. Arsenal have a corner in the 89th minute. Bellerin was the one on the end of it, but he couldn't get his head to it. Uh, Saka now looking to get it in. Monchu now into Bellerin. Over to Saka. Saka's going to try and whip it in. He does, but it's a pinball in the area. But West Ham clear. Up to Alvarez, who's going to just... Oh, he's running out of play. He's running out of play. But 4-1. There's four minutes of injury time. I think we might be home and dry in this game. And this would temporarily put us back to top of the table. Rice now. Back to Lafont. Is there time for another twist in the tail? I do. I would like us to score another goal at the end of this highlight, but I'd be quite happy if nothing happened. Alvarez is in again. Is Alvarez going to get a hat trick? No, he's not. Ramsdale with the save. We don't even get a highlight for the corner. And we win the game under pressure for the majority of that game. Under pressure outside of the game. Alvarez did score a hat-trick. In fact, he opened the scoring. I completely forgot he got the first goal. Julian Alvarez has been shocking recently. And then he goes and does that in what might be one of the biggest games of the season. Yes, we've got the FA Cup final coming up. But in terms of the league, that might be the biggest game of the season. And we've just unlocked uh, an achievement, which is lovely as well. Again, puts us top by two points. If West Ham fail to win, we stay top. If Manchester United win... They will go level on points with Liverpool if they lose. There's so many permutations. My word. Ideal scenario is that Liverpool lose and Manchester United fail to win because that will mean Manchester United have nothing to play for on the final day, and we do. We also have to remember that the Merseyside derby is a uh, is the last game for Liverpool as well. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Right. I'm going to quickly do this press conference and I'm going to come back to you when I know the result of the Villa-Liverpool game and also Manchester United's game as well. Hang on one moment. I'll be right back. Um, Lads, you know when I said that the dream scenario would be for Liverpool to lose and Man United to either lose or draw? Villa win by a goal to nil and Newcastle equalise in the 95th minute against Manchester United. Which means we can win the title with a... <sighs> Just double checking. We could win the title with a draw assuming Liverpool don't massacre Everton on the final day. We can win the title even if we lose if Liverpool lose on the final day. What a huge game to end the episode. What a huge game. Well, let's get to it, shall we? Well, this is tense. <laughs> We're on game day, but I just thought I'd quickly bring you the table and quickly show you it. Let's have a look at the whole thing. So, sit rep. We currently lead the Premier League table after Liverpool lost against Aston Villa and Manchester United drew against Newcastle. The basics of it are this. If we win, there's nothing anyone can do. We are somehow the Premier League champions. If we draw, the chances are we will still be the Premier League champions. Liverpool would have to beat Everton by at least five goals, possibly six. I say possibly five because if it then goes to head-to-head, -to -head, I think Liverpool have beaten us twice this season. So it would be what it is. If it goes to goals scored, we would go through as champions we'll get to that when we get to it if we lose our only shot at winning the title is that everton spring the biggest merseyside derby upset there has ever been and upset liverpool on the final day either with a draw or a loss i don't know how likely either of those things are so the best thing for us to do really is win avoid defeat definitely win would be better and this is the 11 we are hoping can do that for us thomas sushek is injured and he is injured for two weeks we have given him an injection for this game which potentially sacrifices him for the fa cup final we do have palacios on the bench we do have grillich on the bench not bench neither of them are in form they both the injury happened before I could put both of them into the under-23 squad for the final under-23 game of the season. I tried to fiddle about getting a friendly in as well, but I, I gave up at that point. I thought that's probably fiddling it a bit too much. So They are not as fit as they could be, but they are available. I don't know what's going to happen here, but whatever happens, happens. 
If we don't win, we have given it a good go towards the end of the season. If we don't win, we have given it a very good go. But if we do, it's the greatest Premier League victory since Leicester won it. And then we still have an FA Cup final to go. So, <sighs> let's do it, shall we? Let's go. I don't think I've ever been as nervous for a game in Football Manager. I genuinely don't. I was nervous for the Champions League final against Liverpool with my Aston Villa team last year in last year's game, but even then, that didn't feel as tense as this. Remember, United are out of this. They have no nothing to play for other than a potential second place. We, on the other hand, are playing for the title. We've done everything we can to get the team motivated. We're here at Old Trafford. It's within our destiny if we can win the game. And we've conceded almost immediately. Ah! <sighs> almost immediately. Again, it's very dependent on Liverpool as well. It's very dependent on Liverpool. If Liverpool lose, which at the moment they're winning then it doesn't matter. We will win the title regardless. But we really would prefer to have it in our own destiny. But United seem up for this. They seem to be getting revenge. Remember, they're the champions from last season. What a goal that would have been from Valverde. What a goal that would have been. We're going to demand a bit more from our players. Right, we're on the attack. Bowen tries to put a ball forward, but fortunately he doesn't find anyone. Uh, Juan Basaka gets into the midfield. United are playing with a purpose today. This is a different United team. Uh, not in terms of personnel, just in terms of the way they're playing. It's a different United team than the one that was in the FA Cup semi-final. They are playing with an absolute purpose. I think that one's going to be allowed. The referee's coming over. I think that's going to be allowed, personally. I think we're being ripped apart by Manchester United ahead of the FA Cup final here. This is revenge from United for knocking them out of the FA Cup. It's been disallowed, actually. This feels like revenge from knocking them out of the FA Cup. And from eliminating them from the uh, from the title. I say eliminating them. We didn't do that, actually. They've done that themselves. But it doesn't feel good at the moment, I have to say. As it stands, it's actually Liverpool. Well, uh, yeah, as we said, United are out of the title race. As it stands. Oh, my word. Our set pieces have been so good all year. Why are they falling apart now? Two set piece goals. Are you kidding me? Sorry. Are we really being done like that, FM? Are we really being done like that? And LaFont's just flapped his arms. He's just flapped his arms. I'm going to demand more again. We're just we're going to be absolutely ripped apart in this game. We're done, I think. I don't know what we could do to get back into this game. They're just... Oh, my God. It's been disallowed. Right. We need to do something now because they are just pumping goals through us set pieces at the moment are the enemy so we're going to stay on our feet i mean let's have a quick look at the set pieces okay so i've had a look at the set pieces and there's nothing wrong with them so i, I just don't understand how valverde apparently is valverde and varan are both just the best set piece players in the world i mean how tall is valverde he's 511 he's 511 and we let him score a set piece i'm i'm actually fuming at that I genuinely am. Right. Well, we need to go attacking. I don't want to go attacking, but we need to go attacking. I'm dropping Declan Rice back as well into defensive midfields. No, that's not what I want to happen. I want to put him here. I want to put him here, FM. I want to... Thank you. We're going to put him here just to try and hopefully nullify whatever the heck is going on. But... God. Liverpool are 2 0 up. Title's going to Anfield, I think, at this rate. We have got a free kick, though, and a goal here changes everything. Zuma just puts it over. Oh, my word. Zuma puts it over. We're demanding more again. We're getting back into the game a little bit, looking at these stats. We've actually had better XG. Um, we still have better XG as well, actually. We need to just be a little bit more physical well not no that's not the problem actually the problem isn't physicality the problem is we're just letting them have chances at the moment and we need to be just just need to be better than we are we're being really poor at the moment this is all reset again by the way 
Oh, God. Right. What the hell do we do? Right, I'm pointing the finger. Wasn't good enough. Not happy. Angry. Angry. Do we make changes now? Bowen's having the worst game he's ever had. I mean, it's probably an exaggeration. That's what it feels like. Um, he's the Him and Cresswell are having the worst games. Ben Johnson's not far behind. So I think we have to take Bowen off. We'll put Hadji out wide and we'll bring Thiago Armada on. And then... I should have put Brenner on the bench, actually. Now I'm looking. And then we're going to take Cresswell off for... Johnson. And we're actually going to bring Maffeo on. Imagine the, the redemption story of Paolo Maffeo if he does something in this game. And then we're going to save the final substitution just in case Thomas Suchek needs to be... Uh, be taken off but i don't know what else we can do we're going to try and do early crosses as well we're going to try and up the tempo a little bit we're going to distribute quickly to the flanks we're just changing the way that we play which i'm normally not a fan of we're also going to press more as well and we're just going to go for it in this second half i think we've made the changes that we think are going to help let's try that we demotivated these guys i don't really care boys you've been you pardon my french you've been Hopefully, I remember to bleep that out. Right. Encourage. Come on, boys. We're good enough to get something from this game. You know you are. I, don't, I want to have a look at how Liverpool are doing, but at the same time, I really don't. Oh, it's a nice attempt, but it's cleared out by United. I mean, United are in the driving seat in this game. Again, nothing to play for from a... That's cleared out. Good. Nothing to play for from a winning the title perspective, but they could still finish second. Liverpool are 3-0 up. Again, unless something dramatic happens now. I think the title is going to Anfield. Right. Ugh. What do we do? What do we do? We, we need to really go for this now, I think. Adji's not having a good game. I mean, Alvarez is having a terrible game. I think we bring Guiri on and we go two up top. I think that's the only thing that we can do. Yeah, we're going very attacking. We're already hitting it out wide, so that's that's all we can do really. Let's just go for it. We've got nothing left to lose. We've got absolutely nothing left to lose. Pace is up. This is up. Run at defence. We're gonna just counter press everything now. We're just gonna press them to within an inch of their lives. And just see if we can force them to make a mistake and maybe get a goal back just to make the last ten minutes interesting. Liverpool have done their best to score as many goals as possible as well. 3-0. We said before, they need... They, they will have been looking and thinking, we need to make sure that we leave no basis covered. Because if they scored two, but then we drew against United, which is still... I mean... Fire up. That's all I can do. Fire up, boys. What else can we do? Is there anything left to do? But no time left think the title is out of our reach if i'm being honest game over well i'm not happy with the way that we've just bottled it in that game and i am disappointed i don't mind losing that game but the manner in which we did it to me was shocking liverpool win the title by a point which at the end of the day it's liverpool <sighs> well, at the end of the day, that is the season over and done with. So we don't need to worry about um, that anymore. <laughs> That's out of the way. But let's look at the positives. We've lost one more game, but we've actually... Yeah, we've just lost one more game. <sighs> but we've ended up finishing second is my point. So we've progressed in a way, and we finished second. So I, I, can't, I can't fault the lads for the season. Just that final game, to me, is just... That wasn't the way to see the season out. It really wasn't. And now we've got to go against Tottenham in the FA Cup final. And I've got a really bad feeling about it now. A really bad feeling. But that's not for today. That's going to be for the next episode. So, oh, God. Genuinely fuming. <laughs> I meant everything I said when I said that if we were to win the title, it would be a madness. And it didn't really matter if we didn't. But... Just felt like we didn't go without a fight. Um, that's the end of the episode. Uh, next time we'll be doing the FA Cup final and we'll be doing a season review as well. Um, and hopefully we'll be setting ourselves up for a season where we don't bottle it so dramatically at the end. 
If you've enjoyed that, please do leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well for more Football Manager awesomeness. I've been Stubo, you've been awesome. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the FA Cup final. Cheers, bye-bye for now.